Okay, fantastic. Hey, everybody, Matt Middlestad here. Welcome to the No Agent Left Behind Mastermind, where we're here to deliver you the agent, no matter what brokerage you're with. Uh, we're here to deliver value for your business and help you win more in real estate. And uh, I've got some of my fellow colleagues on here, uh, Jonathan Silva out of the San Antonio area. He is a broker. And I've got Jerry Becker that runs a team out of the Dallas area. And today what we're going to talk about is how to love on your clients. And the goal is to take care of the people that are taking care of you. So today what we're going to do is go ahead and get started with that and give you some tips on how you can help your clients more. So Jonathan, I'm going to go ahead and start with you, buddy. Introduce yourself and, uh, you know, tell us what you do to love on your clients. All right. Well, like Matt said, my name is Jonathan Silva. I'm here in the San Antonio market. Uh, one of the managing brokers here at our brokerage. Um, but I've been doing this for going on about nine years now. Prior to this, I was military. So to me, the business is all about relationships, right? Are the transactions nice? Absolutely. Is the commission pay amazing? Absolutely. Right. Is this a business that I want to see thrive and grow a thousand percent? But understanding that the, the business that we're in, it's all about the relationship and there is no business without the relationship. And, you know, for this particular episode or class, however you want to classify it, we're going to be talking about loving on our sphere, but keep in mind that in this business, our clients aren't the only relationships that we're building, right? We're building relationships every single day with every single person that we talk to. Matt's out near Austin, Jerry's near Dallas, I'm down in San Antonio. We've met personally through just building relationships that have started on programs like this, but those are the relationships that we're building. So when it comes to our clients, we have to be hyper-focused on maintaining and building those relationships from day one, from the second that that phone rings, from the second that your email notification pops up, that somebody saw your listing on the, your website, that is when the time starts clicking to start building that relationship. So for me, because it's such a relationship driven side of my business, I let my clients know from the get go that their needs, that their wants, that you know, the reason why they're contacting me to look for real estate, to sell their real estate is what's important to me. I could care less if they're buying a house in five minutes or in five weeks or five months. Hell, I've had clients that have probably been in a pipeline for five years, right? That's okay. Because at the end of the day, it's the investment of the client and it's their money. It's their time. And we as real estate agents are on their time. So from the very beginning, before I'm even talking about what do they want in a property, I'm talking about who are they as a person? What do they enjoy doing? What's their hobbies? Are they married? Are they in a relationship? Do they have kids? Do they want kids? Do they not want kids? Do they have pets? Do they go to school? Are they in college? Do they graduate college? What's their job, right? We're diving in deep. We're building a relationship. I was just on the phone with one of my agents yesterday talking about you're basically trying to marry your clients, okay? And I'm not talking about in the full-on, you know, marital sp scope of it, but seriously, like you're trying to marry your clients. You want to be tied to them for life, okay? And a lot of my clients become friends because of the focus on relationships. So during the process, we're looking at houses. We're talking about their house if they're selling a house. But really, it's getting to know them on a personal level, getting to know what their hobbies are, what their interests are. And what that does is it allows us beyond the transaction to be able to engage and have those conversations with our clients after the fact. Once that deal closes, once we've been paid, once if you're on a transaction base, that relationship has stopped. Let's go beyond the closing table. Let's go grab dinner. Let's go, you know, do some activity. If, you, if you've got similar hobbies, bring them in, include them in what you're doing. So that way they feel involved, they feel engaged. And I can't remember who said it, maybe one of you guys knows, and if they don't post in the comments that 
nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care is like one of the best sayings that I love. And I've used it probably in all of my training classes, but I can never remember who actually said it because I've heard so many people use it over the years, but it's true. So you've got to be able to show your clients that you truly, genuinely. I believe, uh, I'm sorry. I believe Zig Ziglar said that. Was it? It may be. I might be. Or Zig, Zig Ziglar or Brian Tracy, one of those guru guys. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on. We're going to, all the real estate agents are on here. Let's see. Who was the initial quoter of nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care? Let's see. Siri's here to help. Don't get an iPhone. All right. Siri was useless and I'm not going to ask Alexa, but someone said it. It may have been Zig Ziglar. It sounds right. I'm going to believe you, Matt. Put my trust in you. But if he's wrong, let us know. So anyways, you've got to continue to do that. So one of the ways, and I know, Matt, you'll probably dive in deeper to it as well, because I know you kind of use that same program that I'm about to mention. One of the ways that I like to just touch base with our clients is Client Giant, right? It's a system that allows us to continue to send our clients things of value, gifts beyond the closing table that just reminds them, hey, we enjoyed working with you, we like you, and we want to continue to engage with you beyond that closing table. And so it allows us to reconnect with individuals and it allows us to reconnect with clients so that way we can continue to stay in touch. I love the relationship side, but I'm not the best at follow-up. And I can admit it because I can admit my faults. I will engage with them on social media. I will engage with them when we're kind of in conversation or if we bump into each other at the stores. But I am horrible about just picking up the phone and calling somebody because I'm at 15,000 different miles a minute, right? This allows me to touch base with people and the relationships that I've built and then reconnect with them because we get a notification that it was mailed out. We know who's on the list because I have to physically go in and pay for it and put them on the list. But also they'll send me a text message or they'll post it on social media. Hey, Jonathan, I just got this. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Boom, pick up the phone and call them, send them a text message. So building that relationship beyond just the transaction will allow you to not only just feel better and enjoy what you're doing more, but it'll also help your business grow. Yeah, absolutely. That's some, that's some really good stuff. Um, so I'm going to just kind of tell you, you know, what I do, you know, um, I've been in the real estate space uh, for about 19 years and, um, I'm going to be completely honest up until about two years ago, maybe not even, maybe going on two years. Um, I never loved on my clients. Um, and I was sitting around one day with my wife and, uh, this was during the pandemic and I just hit an award at the company I was at. And I had this other colleague that hit the award and all of her business was referral business. And I'm like, my clients love me. I never get a bad review, but man, I buy all my clients. I pay lots of money for my clients. And I'm like, how is she getting all these referrals? And I'm like, yeah, I know all the old school stuff, you know, you know, send them cards, pick up the phone, call them, see how their kids are doing and all that. And, but I got to close my next deal because I got to make a paycheck for the family, right? So I started doing some research and I wanted to find something that was going to be something that would be kind of on autopilot, but also be very thoughtful. And that's when I ran into Client Giant, like Jonathan's talking about. And this, this whole call is not about Client Giant, but it really does send out thoughtful gifts on autopilot to where just the other day there was a gift that went out for the quarter and I got a, I got a, it was a it was a sleep mask right it was very thoughtful like these are thoughtful gifts that go out and my client texts me that I sold a house to three years ago and he didn't text me he, he texted me and he, and he had 
he said, I'm enjoying the sleep mask. And he had it on his face and he sent me a text and he goes, he goes, Hey man, how's the market going? And we started up a conversation and he goes, Hey, he goes, you got time to talk. You know, we're, we're thinking about upgrading. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So it started a conversation, maybe a potential something might happen. If it doesn't, it's okay. But the point is, is I was able to keep in contact with them and it was on autopilot. Um, so client giants, another way. The other thing that I've been doing guys that I want to tell you about is um, I use a company called mailbox power as well. Now mailbox power does have different types of gifts that you can do. I like client giants gifts a little bit better just because of the fact that they're, they're thoughtful. It's not like, here's a cutting board with your, with my brand on it. Right. Or here's some brownies, right? Like these are thoughtful gifts. Like who thinks about going out and getting a, a sleep mask for their clients? You know what I mean? Like it's just thoughtful. So, but what I use mailbox power for is I'm able to uh, send all of my past clients very, very unique cards at a very cheap price so I'm staying in front of them monthly with a card, which I send out motivational cards because I like a lot of motivational stuff. So, you know, and everybody needs more positive in this world that we live in. So every month they get a motivational card from me that has a nice little message on the back and it's on autopilot and it's super cheap to send out. And so I'm hitting them with a card in their mailbox. I'm hitting them every quarter with a, with a, with a specialized gift. Um, <clears throat> And then the last thing that I do is around the holidays, okay, just to put the cherry on the top, I will go to Starbucks and I will buy a bunch of $5 gift cards, okay, and I will send them to all my clients because during the holidays, people like to get all those foo-foo drinks, you know what I mean? And so to have a $5 card, it goes a long way. But consistently throughout the year at a very low cost, I'm staying in touch with these clients so that the day that that they think about selling real estate or their friend is they're playing poker at their house or having a game night or whatever, and they're like, hey, we're looking at moving or whatever. The name that comes up is their real estate agent because they haven't forgot about them. And you could do this at a very minimal cost to stay in touch with your clients. And I'll tell you, I've been doing this about a year little bit over a year it's been very very rewarding in the fact that my past clients are reaching back out to me for referrals and I never had that and I'll be honest I'm almost I stopped paying leads uh, about six months ago and now I'm referral based because I started loving back on my clients and that is where every real estate agent should be is I mean you really should just, it should be referrals. So anyways, that's what I do. Um, so I hit them three different ways. Um, I would, I would choose all three of them, or I would, I would at least do one of them and client giants, a good set it and forget it. And I'll drop the link in here. So you guys have more information on it. But anyways, Jerry, Jerry's been in real estate a long time. Jerry's a giver, you know, um, Jerry is one of those people that, you know, uh, I throw a lot of man love to just because he is somebody that just truly, truly cares about people. And uh, so Jerry's going to tell you what he does. And I'm interested to see as well. So Jerry, the floor is all yours, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, I'm very blessed to be on this video with uh, two amazing men that are just, you know, pillars of their community, helping people out and really, uh, go beyond the average realtor to make sure that their clients are taken care of, not just in a in, in the buying of the house, but like after that, really, you know, being there for people. And that's a, something that you don't always see in real estate. So I appreciate you guys very much and all the wisdom that you impart. Uh, we're here to help our agents. We're helping. We're here to help other agents uh, be successful. Um, I think one of the big the things that Jonathan said was. Um, uh, uh, to automate their, to automate things. That's probably the biggest thing that I didn't do in the beginning uh, was to create that database. So as you have clients, as you have transactions and so forth, uh, creating that database, that database 
uh, because that's going to that's going to build your business and explode your business in the future is to be able to uh, have a list of people that are going to send you referrals and then your referrals can become bigger than you than the clients are like uh, Matt said basically you can stop his marketing and the and the best client is a referral when I pick up the phone and call that person um, they say they just like yes you just start talking to them they're already They've already got this recommendation, and that is the most powerful thing that you can have in real estate. Is somebody say, "Hey, call this person; they'll help you out. They did a great job for me." Um, man, that's a, that can be the easiest client that you're going to get. And I've been very successful with getting referral clients and keeping my business going just from referrals. Um, the uh, other thing is what Matt talked about was things that were tangible, not just an email, not just a text. But when they're getting something. Uh, whether it's a card, a gift, and so forth, it, you know, it means a lot more. You're doing more than, than the average agent is doing. Um, and they, they, you know, they see that, that you really care when you do something like that. So I'd say that is, that is huge for new agents is to put money back into their business, especially the business um, of the people they've already worked with and, uh, and uh, staying in front of them so that those people can, you can do the same great thing for the people that they know. Um, and uh, it'll help explode your business in the future. So a new agent that's starting out, uh, I didn't really reach out to my past clients. I didn't create a database and so forth. So if you're starting out and you're new in the business, that is like the number one thing is you just stay in contact with these people, sending them gifts and so forth, whatever you're going to use to do that, um, then your business will grow much faster than you think once you started getting those, these referrals. A uh, couple of things that I've done is when we're walking through a house, Somebody might mention a birthday, a birthday party or something like that. I start putting them in my phone right away, right? So when they get a text from me saying, hey, happy birthday or happy birthday to your son or daughter and so forth, they're like, well, how did you know, right? Because I'm paying attention. We're having a conversation, walking through the house. I'm asking questions and I'm getting this information. They might mention their anniversary, right? Uh, the other place that sometimes you can get this is from their 1003, which is at closing or from the loan officer. So sometimes you can get birthdays that way, right? Um, so stay in contact that way when you remember people's special days of the year and so forth, that really connects with them. I think that's very powerful and that's something that's very simple to do. Um, and again, automating or putting something on a calendar that I just check my calendar every day and I see, Hey, what birthdays, who do I need to reach out to today? Right. Um, and that's a, it's a big part of what I do. Um, and then, uh, I would say the other thing is, um, Reaching out to people like sell, like reach out to them with a phone call just to say hello. Uh, how's how's business going for them? How's life going for them? Uh, connecting with people. Giving giving of your own time and, and reaching out to them in person is the is going to make a difference with them and referring people back to you. And I'll have people that will just you know I had somebody that called me this week. Hey, can we meet up? They were tenants. Uh, so that's another thing is I don't always do rentals for people. I, I definitely do it for people in my, in my sphere of influence, a circle, um, not because of the money, obviously, what do we make like $200 or $500, you know, dollars on a rental, but it gives you somebody that can send you referrals. Uh, but also that could be a buyer in the future. And I did, I think more rentals in the beginning, just because eventually those turned into buyer clients, but they also became a referral client as well. So, um, I help uh, renters when I first started out in the business. That obviously gets you a little bit of money, but more so it helps you build a database that you can work with that's going to be a great referral source. So those would be my recommendations and anything we can do to help you out, let us know. Back to you, Matt. I appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome, Jerry. And, and, and I want to ask you guys that are on here before we uh, get done with the uh, mastermind. Have any of you guys used video text to reach out to your clients instead of texting them like, hey, how are you doing? Just like sending them a video, like when it's their birthday, like happy video, you know, happy, happy video, happy birthday video. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's very powerful. We all know how huge video is. So I just want to see if any of you guys, you guys use that at all. Yeah, I do. Um, one thing I did started doing a few years back, probably three or four years ago is social media is king on just like letting everybody know everybody's secrets, right? So when you sign up for social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you put in what your birth date is. And if you don't go in and put that that information's private, 
Well, now all of your friends know that it's Jonathan Silva's birthday, right? So everybody starts to go on and post on their page or on their feed and say, hey, happy birthday, whatever, whatever. But that gets bogged down very quick, right? Because the 16,000 friends that we've got on our social media platforms all jump out of the woodworks to tell us happy birthday that we haven't talked to in the past 364 days just because they got notified that it's your birthday, right? So instead of posting a, a comment or a thing on their newsfeed that says happy birthday, Matt, send them a message, a video message in their actual messenger app or Snapchat or text or email or bomb bomb. If you're using bomb bomb, send them an actual video that says, Hey, Matt, what's up? I heard it was your birthday. I just wanted to give you a quick shout, let you know that I'm thinking about you. Hope your day's awesome. Enjoy a steak dinner, whatever the case may be, right? Whatever their favorite food is and send it. And it's going to stand out a thousand times over than just the everyday nonchalant, hey, happy birthday, cake emoji, you know, confetti emoji, along with the 15,000 other people that have commented the same exact thing because that's what Facebook recommended. So stand out a little bit. And I'm going to piggyback real quick. Jerry can get on if he's done video chats here as well. But in, in kind of follow up to what Jerry was saying about kind of knowing your clients, getting their birthdays and kind of important dates in their life. One, client registration sheets. If you don't have one, if you haven't heard of it, create one. It's basically your questionnaire when you're interviewing a client for the first time. It works on sellers. It works on buyers. Who are they? What's their name? What's the address that they're currently living in? What's their birth date? If they have an anniversary date, what's their favorite color? What's their favorite food type, right? Anything that you can question during a normal conversation, write it down on your buyer registration or your seller registration, and then plug that into your CRM that you're using, whichever CRM it is, Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, Chime, uh, what do we got? Real Geeks, uh, what was the other one? Boomtown is a big one. JV4, use, right? JV4. It doesn't matter what CRM you're using as long as you're using that CRM. So client registration, do it and save it. The only other thing I'm going to add is we talked about some programs and systems to kind of simplify or automate this process of building those relationships. But the number one return on investment that you are going to see is getting face-to-face, belly-to-belly with your sphere and break bread. Have a cup of coffee, go to lunch, go to dinner, go to brunch. It doesn't matter. Go to a bar and watch a game or something. Belly to belly, not that close, hopefully, but that's the number one ROI that you're going to see in this business. 100%, Jonathan. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't really touch on it. I, and, you know, people that are are watching our channel, you know, they might be experienced agents uh, or they, they might be new agents. But if you, if you, if you get a really good referral business, um, you want to look into client appreciations, um, you know, and that's investing at, a, at, a, at like the next level in your business. And I've seen some agents that have done that and, and run really good referral businesses off of that. Jonathan, have you, just real quick before we end, have you done any client appreciation events with your team? Yeah, absolutely. We love doing those. Um, and you can, you can scale it right? It could be scaled around your business, around whatever level your business is at, right? We've done everything from pumpkin patches to barbecues to movie nights to uh, during COVID, we did private movie nights. So we used to every year, we would do a movie night where we'd invite all of our clients to the theater. We would rent the entire theater out, popcorn, candy, sodas, the movie, the whole works, right? Um, But during COVID, we couldn't really do that because everything was kind of shut down or restricted. So instead, we got everybody, uh, how did we structure it? We sent out popcorn, a movie code, and I think like a, a coupon or something for Walmart or Target, whatever they put in the box. Sorry, guys, I had other people do it. <laughs> But, you know, it it basically sent out the movie at home kit. So instead of meeting with us, unfortunately, here's your movie at home kit. Enjoy a movie night with your family, with your friends, however you want to structure it on us tonight. 
and it was the COVID client appreciation party, right? So there's several different ways that you can do it. I've, I know people have done so many other things, um, but it's just a matter of finding what fits in your budget, the amount of clients that you're having out to the event and where you live. If you live somewhere up north, you're probably not wanting to do a client appreciation party in the middle of December. So maybe drop that sucker in July, right? Focus around your business and make it work. And the other thing I will add, I know we're focused on clients, but in our, in our community and in our business, agents are also our clients when we're talking about network to network referrals or getting those referrals from other agents. Consider having an agent appreciation party for your referral partners or some type of celebration, appreciation event for the agents that are also sending you business in your business. Hey, I'm glad you mentioned that, Jonathan, because I've actually uh, been in, in talks with the uh, CEO at Client Giant, and uh, they are in the process. We're about 30, they're about 30 days out, and they're going to launch a, and I don't know if you've noticed this in Client Giant, you can put friends, colleagues, clients. Well, they are, they are going to be launching a basically kind of like a top of mind, but it'll be more, you know, geared toward uh, employees. Okay. So, it, it, and they understand the different things like referral networks, things like that. So there will be something for that type of people because you need to love back on them as well. Uh, because those are your, that's your referral network. So, yeah. Well, good stuff, good stuff, gentlemen. Um, hope this helps out somebody. Um, again, every week on Wednesday, we get together, either if we're in the car or at our desk or in front of a house. And our passion is to give back to the agents, okay, and give you real value because we believe no agent should be left behind and that we grow together. So hope everybody has a fantastic week. And uh, please, if you have any comments or anything, drop them in. Uh, to YouTube. And then you can always reach out to us uh, as well uh, through social media. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much, Jonathan and Jerry. And we'll all talk soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye.